Hello, and welcome back to another video. This is the fifth episode of the story in which the Sandame is forced to use a Kenjutsu stolen by the Shodame to help Naruto survive. Now, with the incredible power of Jiangu on his side, Naruto is ready to shake up the ninja world and show his power. Don't forget to like and share the video, as well as subscribe to the channel. So, let's get started. Chunin Exams Tower it had been several days since Naruto and his friends had arrived at the tower, and the second exam would be closed in only a half hour. Team 8 was currently in a small arena waiting for all the other teams that would pass the exam. Three balconies wrapped around most of the room, all connected. At the far end was a large statue of a pair of hands in the Hitsuji seal. Gathered in the same room was Team 9, Team 10, the Kyumo team, the Taki team, the Odo team, and the Suna team. Standing on the balconies were the Hokage, Anko, Ibiki, the Jounin Sensei for the teams, Tsunade, and Shizun. Standing next to Hiruzen was a familiar fox mask ANBU. So what are we waiting for? Choji asked. For the second exam to be finished, Naruto answered. We've got about, 30 minutes or so if I'm right. I hope Kiba's team makes it, Hinata said. That mud better not cause Sasuke-kun to fail. Ino growled. Shikamaru sighed and muttered something about troublesome blondes under his breath. Several minutes later, Kabuto's team entered the area with small scratches and bruises on their visible skin. Looking over, Naruto saw Sasha hiding in the shadows of the exit corridor. Naruto signaled her to wait until he could come over. Anko leaned over to Hiruzen and whispered, I just got word that the Uchiha's team entered the tower. We can't allow him to compete with that curse mark on him. Hiruzen turned to her and whispered back, We can't do that Anko-chan, if we deny Sasuke the chance to fight, it might make him believe that we're holding him back. If that happens then he'll listen to Orochimaru's whispers of power and run to him. Kakashi has a seal that will lock away his curse mark. I still don't like it, but I'll go along with it for now, Anko grumbled. Hiruzen chuckled and said, don't worry, first sign the seals taking over, we're pulling him out. Twenty minutes later, a ragged and tired Team 7 ran through the corridor. Kiba seemed to be glaring daggers at both of his teammates while Akamaru slept soundly in his hood. What happened to you? Naruto asked as he eyed Kiba's injuries. I'll tell you later. Kiba replied. After I catch my breath. Anko stepped forward and said, Well now, since nobody else is going to come, I can officially announce that the second exam is over. Congratulations to all of you who managed to make it. Hiruzen then stepped forward and began, Yes, congratulations to all of you, you've made your villages proud by surviving the forest of death. However, I think I should explain the true meaning of the Chunin exams. And Hiruzen then explained to all of the Chunin hopefuls how the Chunin exams were created and how they were a substitute for war. He told them that by putting their lives on the line, they would bring pride to their villages. Enough of this, let's get on with the fighting, Gara said. Before Hiruzen could say anything, the fox masked ANBU jumped down. Forgive me, Hokage sama. Kitsune said, but allow me to explain the next part. Hiruzen nodded and stepped back while Kitsune moved forward. All right boys and girls, you may refer to me as Kitsune, and I'm going to be in charge of this part of the exam, Kitsune said. Unfortunately, there are too many of you and we need to hold a preliminary round. What? Why do you need that? Ino yelled. Kitsune sighed and explained, there are too many of you and the final round of the exams is the really important part. There will be a lot of important clientele coming to observe whoever makes it. If we had every one of you fights then the matches would take too long, especially if two geniuses were to fight, or worse yet, two stamina freaks. Naruto, Tamari, Lee, Guy, and Shikamaru sneezed simultaneously, prompting those who knew them to chuckle. Now then, if there's anyone who would like to drop out now, please raise your hand and you'll be escorted out of the tower. Kitsune announced. Kabuto promptly raised his hand. 
you're leaving Kabuto Senpai. Sakura asked. Yeah, I'm having a hard time hearing out of my left ear after that scuffle with the Oto Nin's back before the written exam, Kabuto said as he sheepishly rubbed the back of his head. And I got hit hard on my leg, so I can't fight all that well. He's lying, Hinata noted as she observed him with her Byakugan. Kabuto was a good liar, she almost missed the extremely small twitch in his muscles that signaled he was lying. It didn't help that his leg wasn't injured, but he did make the limp look real as he left. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw Naruto signal Sasha to follow the silver-haired teen. Since nobody else is leaving, Kitsune said, jolting Hinata from her thoughts, we'll get on with this. Please look behind me at the screen to see who's fighting. A large screen lowered from the ceiling and everyone turned their attention to it. The first pair of names that flashed on the screen was, Sasuke Uchiha vs. Yorio Akado, all right, everyone who isn't fighting will go up to the balconies and wait your turn, Kitsune said. Soon it was only her, Sasuke, and Yoroi still in the arena. Everyone listen up because I'm only going to say this once. Kitsune shouted, getting everyone's attention. I am the proctor of these matches, so my word is the law. Both combatants will fight until one of you gives up, is knocked out, or dies. If I decide that a match is over, then I will step in and declare whom I see as the winner. If you refuse to comply and continue to attack your opponent, I will interfere and may cause you to lose consciousness, or decide to take off one of your limbs, Kitsune said with an eerily cheerful tone. Oh Kushina! Hiruzen groaned. Ah, brings back memories, Tsunade sighed as she remembered all those adventures with her genin team. That's Kushina all right, Kakashi thought with a sweat drop. I think we could be best friends. Enko thought cheerily. Sensei still got. It, Kurinai thought with a proud smirk. Why do I get the feeling I would wish I was dead if I ever fight her when she's angry? Orochimaru, disguised as the Odo Jounin, thought as he suppressed a shudder. The loss of a limb? How unyouthful, do I even need to say who this is? Naruto-san's mother is, unique, Jiyu said. Kyubi snorted and said, unique doesn't even begin to describe that woman. Trust me. I've been in her a long time. So, are both fighters ready? Kitsune asked. Both Sasuke and Yoroi grunted in confirmation. I asked a question and I expect an answer, Kushina said with a dangerous tone. I'm ready, Yoroi said. A little scared by the tone Kushina had. Whatever, Sasuke grunted. Behind her mask, Kushina's eye began to twitch. Then let the match begin. Kushina declared as she leapt back, out of the way. Yoroi and Sasuke threw a shuriken at each other and moved to the left. Sasuke's curse mark flared up and caused him to lose his balance. Yoroi saw this and raced forward and grabbed Sasuke by the shirt and pinned him down as his hand began to glow blue. Sasuke felt his strength being taken and quickly hit Yoroi in the arm, forcing the older shinobi to release him. You're stealing, my chakra, Sasuke stated as he panted. So, you figured it out? Yoroi asked in amusement. Yoroi's special ability allows him to drain his opponents of their chakra whenever he makes contact with them, Orochimaru thought to himself, now you'll have no choice but to rely on the seal. Go ahead Sasuke-kun, release its power. Yoroi took the opportunity to dash at Sasuke and extended his glowing palm. The Uchiha Sion bent backward and kicked Yoroi into the air. Lee, his team, and Team 8 recognized this as the beginning of the attack Lee was going to use on Sasuke all those days ago. Dancing Shadow Leaf? Yoroi asked as Sasuke appeared behind him. From here on out, it's all original, Sasuke declared as he prepared to attack, but his curse mark flared up and covered the left side of his face in burning red marks. Every Kanoha Jounin who was aware of the curse mark prepared to take action. Yes. Orochimaru hissed as he licked his lips. However, to everyone's surprise, the curse seal retraced back into its dormant state. Without being hindered by the pain, 
Sasuke completed his attack which was composed of a series of kicks that finished with a large kick to the stomach as Yoroi hit the ground. Shursha Rendan Sasuke cried as he leapt back and dropped down to his knees. Sasuke Uchiha wins the match, Kushina declared. Kakashi appeared next to Sasuke and put a hand on his shoulder as he shunshined them away. Naruto sighed and rested his head on his arms as they rested on the railing. Man, who knew that team would steal someone else's techniques, he asked. Well, he does think that he should get whatever he wants, so I'm not all that surprised, Hinata said. What about you Naruto? Would you steal others? Techniques? Shino asked. Only if they say I can, I don't want to be known as a thief, the blonde Uzumaki replied. You kind of are a thief already, Karinai stated. Naruto turned to his sensei and said, the Uchiha was going to kill me, Mizuki was going to kill Irika sensei, that guy on the bridge hurt Hinata-chan, and you already know about my latest ones. Will the next fighters please come down? Kushina asked. Everyone turned their attention to the screen and saw the next pair of fighters. Shino Aburame vs Jiro of Taki, looks like I'm up, Shino said as he made his way downstairs. Hey, Shino. Naruto called out. The Aburame heir turned back to his teammate. You better not lose. The bug user smirked and nodded his head as he made his way down into the arena. He stood across from the Taki ninja that was cracking his knuckles and slipped on some spiked gloves. I'm gonna beat you to a pulp and show everyone that Taki is superior. Jiro declared. All right all right, are both fighters ready? Kushina asked. Yeah, Jiro told her. Shino just nodded silently. Then let the match begin. Kushina shouted as she jumped back again. Jiro raced forward and threw several punches at Shino, but the young Aburame just dodged all the hits without much effort. Stand still and let me hit you. Jiro roared. That would be illogical. Why? Because allowing you to hit me would be counterproductive to getting me victory, Shino said in a monotone voice that angered the Taki Genin. Man, Shino's going to make him do something stupid, Shikamaru noted as he watched the fight lazily. Of course, those idiots going to do something stupid, Fu said as she walked over to Kanoha's side of the balconies. What are you doing over here? Choji asked. I figured it would be much better to hang out with people who don't hate my guts, Fu said. Well then, welcome. Naruto greeted them as he flashed her a smile. Shikamaru wanted to question Fu about her words but decided to hold off on that for now. Back in the arena, Shino had started his counterattack after Jiro had tired himself out. The Aburame was holding one of his swords and using it to attack Jiro. The Taki Nin blocked most of the attacks with his gloves, but some had made their way through and gave him some shallow cuts. And here I was hoping for a challenge, Shino taunted. I'll show you a challenge. Jiro said as he jumped back and made several hand seals. Swaitun, Tepadama no Jutsu. He opened his mouth to fire off the water bullet, but all that came out was a small trickle of water. What happened? Didn't he perform the Jutsu correctly? Sakura asked. Naruto discreetly activated his Sharingan and looked at the arena, smirking at what he saw. That's clever, Naruto said in a low voice so that only Hinata, Kurinai, and Kiba, with his advanced hearing, could hear. What is it? Kiba asked quietly. Watch, Shino's going to explain it soon, was all that Naruto said. W what? Did you do tea to me? Jiro asked as he dropped down to his knees in exhaustion. It's pretty simple, Shino began, at the beginning of the match, after your initial attack, when you made eye contact with me, I had placed a special genjutsu on you. It causes you to use up more chakra without realizing it. I was expecting you to use several jutsu in this match to help speed things up, but that wasn't needed since you were using chakra in your attacks. How did you know? Jiro asked as he tried to keep himself from falling unconscious. 
We Aburame are trained to have sharp eyesight so we may spot even the tiniest of insects. I had noticed small wisps of chakra coming from your hands whenever you would attack. It also helped that I placed several insects on you during my attacks. He then held up his sword and said, You see, these swords were specially designed for me. I would have insects crawl in the handles and up the blade. There, they would exit the blade and latch onto my opponents, taking their chakra. Jiro finally fell and Kushina said, The winner is Shino Aburame. Way to go Shino. Naruto cheered. Shino walked back up to the balcony as a small swarm of bugs escaped Jiro's body and flew back into Shino's coat. The medical team then picked up the comatose Jiro and carried him off. Next fighters, Kushina called out. Ten Ten Higarashi vs Shikamaru Nara Well, at least I can get my match over with and get back to sleep, Shikamaru thought as he walked down the stairs. I wonder how Shika is going to handle this, Naruto thought out loud. Isn't he the laziest person in your class? Karinai asked. Indeed, but Shikamaru-san is also a genius, Shino said. As far as I know, only his father has been able to beat him in a game of shogi. Karinai just blinked and couldn't say anything. Yeah, that was my expression too, Asuma said as he chuckled at the female Jounin's expression. Go ten ten. Show everyone your flames of youth. Guy shouted. Ten Ten just groaned and tried to find a hole to hide in. Man, it must be troublesome to have to deal with a sensei like that, Shikamaru said as he lazily glanced at the spandex wearing man as he hugged his mini clone. You have no idea, the Kunoichi grumbled. Are both fighters ready? Kushina asked. Both Kanoha Shinobi nodded and Kushina started the match as she jumped away. Ten Ten took out a scroll and unsealed a Kuzurigama, twirling its way eight ball as she waited to see what Shikamaru would do. All right, she doesn't look like she's a taijutsu person, her build isn't that tough, Shikamaru thought as he observed Ten Ten. Judging by how she handles herself, she looks like a weapon user. She has that one hand that's holding the blade closer to her scrolls, ready to take out another if she wants it. Looks like this one's going to be a bit challenging. Ten Ten got tired of waiting and raced towards Shikamaru and swung the weight at him. The young Nara leaned back and watched as. The metal object flew across his vision before he lashed out with a kick. Ten Ten twisted her body to the side and dodged it before sending the weight at him again. Troublesome, Shikamaru muttered before he leaned back and grabbed the chain before yanking the weapon away from Ten Ten. She quickly took out a scroll and leaped into the air before whipping it open and sending several weapons at Shikamaru. The Nara jumped back and avoided most of the weapons, however, he got a shallow cut on his leg from a stray tanto. You're good, Ten Ten said, I thought I might have had you with that one. You might have, but then it would have been a pain to lose, Shikamaru said. Especially to a girl, he mumbled quietly. Unfortunately, Ten Ten managed to pick up on that last part and glared at him. She then started to throw a large variety of weapons at him, forcing Shikamaru to put in a lot of effort to dodge. Suddenly, as Ten Ten took a short breather, her body froze. Finally, I thought that you would never stop, Shikamaru sighed as he stood up, Ten Ten being forced to do the same. What? But how? I know about Nara's abilities, but your shadow isn't even extended. Ten Ten cried. How about you look closer, Shikamaru said as he tilted his head down. Ten Ten looked down as well and saw a small shadow connected to her weapons, following the trail, she saw that Shikamaru had bounced his shadow off of her discarded weapons to reach her. So now what? Ten Ten asked. Shikamaru said nothing as he reached forward and grabbed air. Ten Ten did the same but grabbed a nearby sword that was embedded in the ground. Shikamaru made Ten Ten pull out the sword and had her aim it at her hand. So, Shikamaru began, are we going to do this the easy way where you willingly surrender? Or am I going to have to make you hurt yourself until you do? Seeing no way out of this, Ten Ten sighed and said, I surrender. Shikamaru Nara is the winner, Kushina said. 
the Nara heir made Ten Ten drop the sword on the ground before releasing her from his cage mane. Don't worry, Ten Ten. Your flames of youth are still burning brightly. Guy cheered. Kushina threw a kanai at him and sent a glare from behind her mask. Inside voice. That was all she said. Very unyouthful, Lee said. Kushina sighed and asked, Will the next fighters please come down? Sakura Haruno vs. Tamari Sabaku Well, looks like I won't have to put up much effort, Tamari thought. Though I would have loved to fight a real kunoichi, like those Kumo girls, or the Taki and Hyuga girls with strange hair. Yes. Now I can show Sasuke-kun how strong I am. The howler monkey eye mean Sakura screeched, making everyone nearby go deaf. Tamari was beginning to think that knocking her out would do everyone a favor. Knock her out, knock her out, Kushina chanted, rooting for Tamari and hoping that Sakura would be knocked out. Are both fighters ready? Yeah, Tamari droned as she took a look at her nails. Cha. I'll. Pound you into dust. Sakura said as she sent a pitiful amount of ki at Tamari. To the Suna Kunoichi, it felt like a fly was breathing on her. Begin. Kushina started the match and stayed where she was, not concerned for her safety since she had already seen Sakura's skills, or rather, lack thereof. She knew that Tamari wouldn't even have to pull out any big moves to even win. Shinaro. Sakura roared as she charged forward with a kunai. Tamari just stared at her with a bored expression and brought up her folded fan to block it, with one hand. Wanting to end this pathetic match early, she quickly disarmed Sakura and slammed her fan into the pinkette's gut, sending her into the wall and knocking her out. Everyone waited for the match to end, but Kushina didn't make the call. Everyone looked over and saw her sitting in a chair, and reading an issue of Kanoha Weekly while sipping a drink as the straw went under her mask. 1. Fox. Hiruzen yelled. Kushina yelped and looked around, pocketing the magazine and throwing away the drink. Oh, is it over? Kushina asked while rubbing the back of her head. The winner is Tamari. Now, will the next fighters come down? Naruto Uzumaki vs. Omoi of Kumo, alright. I'm up. Naruto cheered as he vaulted onto the railing. Good luck Naruto-kun, Hinata said. Thanks, Hinata-chan, Naruto said as he turned to Shino. I will not wish you good luck, Shino said. Eh. Was the intelligent reply of his teammates and sensei. Please let me finish, Shino started as he held up his hand. I will not wish you good luck for two reasons. One is that you do not need luck. And two? Naruto asked. I will instead wish you a good victory, Shino stated. Naruto grinned and gave him a salute before he jumped into the arena. He could feel his mother's proud look through her mask. Oh boy, this might be a problem. What if he's a very important person in the village and I give him a life-crippling injury? What if he's related to a royal clan and they want revenge for what I did? Omoi began to panic before Karui bashed his head in. Don't you start with that crap. Karui roared. If you start your little panic think I'm going to beat you into the ER. Man oh man, you two ain't fly, if you keep this up, you'll make me cry, their sensei rapped. Two, he was a large man with dark skin and wore a Kumo Jounin outfit. He had blonde hair and a small goatee. He wore shades and had a tattoo of bull horns on his cheek. On his back were several small swords. But B sensei, Omoi protested. But Karui had other ideas, she lifted Omoi and threw him into the arena. Naruto was standing there with an amused grin on his face. Are both fighters ready? Kushina asked. Yeah, Naruto nodded. I guess so, Omoi replied. This guy makes Isabu look brave, Kyubi thought with a sweat drop. Begin. Kushina jumped back and Naruto raced forward with his gauntlets ready to slice and dice. Omoi quickly brought up his sword to block. 
it, he then aimed a kick at Naruto's torso and sent the young Jinchuriki skidding back across the ground. Katan, Gokakya no Jutsu. Naruto blew out a large fireball at Omoi. The white-haired Kyumo team jumped to the side and avoided the flames as they impacted the wall behind him. Swaytun, Mizurapa. Omoi cried as he launched a large stream of water at Naruto. Dotan, Doriahiki. Naruto made the necessary hand seals and stomped his foot on the ground. A large slab of earth sprung up from the ground and blocked the jet stream as it impacted against the earth, only loosening a few pebbles. Omoi jumped over the wall and aimed his sword down at where he thought Naruto would be. But when he cleared the wall Naruto wasn't there. The next thing he knew, he was knocked down to the floor by a metal fist. Omoi looked back to see that Naruto had disguised himself as part of the wall and struck Omoi in the back. You're a strange one, Omoi noted. Not a lot of people ever use a trick like that. Well I consider myself to be, very unpredictable, Naruto replied with a smirk on his face. Omoi said nothing and darted at Naruto while swinging his sword in an attempt to get a good cut on the blonde. Responding to the attacks, Naruto either dodged them or parried them with his gauntlets. Seeing an opening, Naruto swiped his claw at Omoi and the white-haired genin jumped back. Naruto then spun in place and punched at the air between him and Omoi, an action that confused everyone who didn't know what he could do before those looks were replaced with shock as the metal fist came flying at Omoi as it was connected to his arm by crimson threads. WH what the heck was that? Ino shouted as she saw the threads. I, I don't know, was Asuma's only reply. He looked over and saw that the rest of Team 8 was unfazed. Looking further he saw that neither Kakashi, who had returned, nor his only remaining member of Team 7 looked shocked either. They probably saw it when they were in Nami no Kuni, Asuma thought, having heard about the mission when he and Kurinai had met up for lunch one day. When both their teams coincidentally had a day off. Impossible, that looks like Kakuzu's technique, Orochimaru thought having returned from his small encounter with Kakashi after he sealed Sasuke's curse mark. But he took their kenjutsu from Taki after he was banished. So how does the Kyubi brat have it? Shikamaru was silently observing his blonde-haired friend with a calculating gaze. No matter how hard he thought of it, he had no clue as to what Naruto had just done. Though, it may have something to do with that particularly long stitch mark I saw on him, the Narayer thought. Back in their academy days, on a hot summer afternoon, Naruto had used his shirt to wipe his sweating forehead and Shikamaru saw what appeared to be a stitch mark that ran along his side. Looks like everyone's paying attention now, Naruto thought. Indeed, I wonder how you'll handle. This? Jiyu wondered as he leaned against the bars of the cage. Naruto tuned back into the battle and let his other arm fall off as he used both of them like flails, pounding away at Omoi from a distance. Suetun, Mizu Bunshin, Omoi created several clones from the water that was pooled on the other side of the earth wall and had them attack Naruto from behind. Naruto merely turned around and fired off several threads that pierced the clones and turned them back into puddles. Naruto quickly sent out a web of threads that quickly wrapped around Omoi and restrained him. Seeing that he couldn't break free or make any seals with his arms restrained at his sides tightly, the Kyumo Genin had no choice but to surrender. The winner is Naruto, Kushina said, just barely able to keep the pride from her voice. Naruto grinned and jumped back onto the balcony where he was quickly congratulated by the Kanoha ninjas, except for Kabuto's other teammates and Niji, and Fu. On the other side of the arena, Gara stared at Naruto with a hungry look, one that possessed a hint of madness in it. He would enjoy killing this blonde boy and giving his blood to mother. Next fighters please, Kushina announced. Yujito ni vs Kiba Inazuka, alright Akamaru. It's our turn. Kiba shouted as he and the small white dog raced down the steps. Kakashi wished his student good luck before he raced away. Hey Yujito, you ready to go? B asked. Yujito sighed, tired of her sensei's rapping, and said, 
yeah, I'm ready. B grinned and said, then get this show on the road. Wee he. Yujito had an annoyed look on her face as she walked into the arena. Kiba took a whiff of the air and softly growled. He smelt the scent of a cat. So, you ready? Kiba asked as he put on a feral grin. Yujito grinned and got into her stance. Kushina took this as a sign that they were ready and started the match. Kiba and Yujito raced towards each other with Akamaru right at Kiba's side. Kiba threw a punch at Yujito, and she bent backward as it flew over her face. She performed a handstand and kicked Kiba in the chest with her heel digging into the skin. Kiba flew backward and Akamaru went and bit into Yujito's leg as she turned back upright. Yow! Yujito yelped as she shook her leg wildly to try and get Akamaru to let go. Kiba used this opportunity to kick her in the back, sending her flying as Akamaru let go. Yujito landed on her feet with the grace of a cat. She then made several hand seals and took a deep breath. Katan, Aogo Kakya no Jutsu. Yujito breathed out a large blue fireball that scorched the ground beneath it as Kiba jumped out of the way. Blue fire? Is that a side effect of the Nibi? Naruto asked. The Nibi can use blue fire since she's practically made of it, Kyubi said. Though she also can use regular fire. Is blue fire hotter than regular fire? Jiyu asked. The Nibis is, her flames are the second hottest type of fire in the world, only the Amaterasu can. Overpower it. Well, that was unexpected, Kiba said as he looked at his signed coat. What? Were you expecting me to use lightning? Yujito asked with a smirk. Nah, you looked more like a Swayton person, Kiba said. Yujito arched an eyebrow at this and wondered what about her appearance made her look like a Swayton user. Kiba saw that she was distracted and performed a Gitsuga with Akamaru. The twin tornadoes flew through the air and hit her in the stomach, sending her flying into the wall. Again Akamaru. Kiba shouted as he and his partner made another Gitsuga hit Yujito. You mess with the cat, Yujito started, you get the claws. Her fingernails and toenails extended into sharp claws. When Kiba came close to her, she jumped into the air and slashed at the spinning tornado. Kiba fell to the floor with shallow cuts on his back cutting through his jacket. Akamaru ran over to Kiba and whimpered in worry. Don't worry boy. That damn demon cat the fire daimyo's wife has given me cuts worse than this, Kiba reassured the small dog. Who am I kidding? Those things hurt. Kiba wailed mentally. So even Kanoha has to catch a runaway animal for their daimyo's wife too, Yujito thought in amusement. Your human leaders can't keep a simple animal from running away? A voice purred in the back of her head. Must be some smart animals, Yujito thought. As smart as your friend who thinks of the worst-case scenarios? The voice asked. You know Omoi's just a bit paranoid, Yujito defended. Just a bit? The voice asked incredulously. Before Yujito could answer, she had to dodge a punch that came from Kiba as he engaged her in a fierce taijutsu match. Both of them traded blows as they tried to beat their opponents. Kiba overextended his punch and Yujito capitalized on that. She flipped her over her shoulder and pinned him to the ground as she had a claw aimed at his throat. Akamaru was prepared to charge at the cat-smelling lady but stopped when she pinned Kiba, not wanting to provoke her into doing anything to his best friend. Give up, Yujito demanded. Kiba had no choice, especially with the sharp, pointy object aimed at his throat. Kushina declared Yujito the winner and she got off of Kiba and extended a hand to help him up. Kiba grasped her hand and was pulled to his feet. Nice match, I haven't had a good fight in a while, Yujito complimented. Something tells me that you weren't going all out, were you? Kiba asked. I'm forbidden from going all out unless I'm in a life or death situation, Yujito answered. Kiba nodded and went back up to the balcony. Along the way, he sniffed his hand and unconsciously smiled. 
Smells nice, for a cat lady. Chunin exams tower, we will be having a short break to fix the damage in the arena, Kushina announced. She walked off to finish reading her magazine. Good match Kiba, Naruto said as the Inazuka air walked over. I could have done better, Kiba sighed. Man, what's my mom gonna say? About this? Just tell her that your opponent was very skilled, Shikamaru said as he leaned against the railing. It'll save you a lot of trouble. So what happened on your way to the tower? Naruto asked. Kiba sighed and began, we were on our way here after we had recovered from that little scuffle with the Odo guys. Sasuke took command and I was too tired to protest, not that it would have gotten me anywhere with how my team is. So he had to lead us in the wrong direction and got us caught in this highly advanced genjutsu trap laid out by a team of AIM shinobi. We managed to get free but it seriously cost us a lot of time due to the nature of the genjutsu. So we had to book it before we were disqualified. Wow, your team has a lot of bad luck, Hinata said. What do you mean? Ino asked. Our first C-rank mission turned into an A-rank one due to the appearance of Zabuza Momochi, Kiba told her. Isn't that the guy who joined the village about a month ago? Choji wondered. Yup, Naruto managed to convince them to join the village when his team came to back up ours, Kakashi informed him. What can I say? I have a way with words, Naruto said as he grinned. Careful Naruto-kun or that ego of yours might cause your head to burst, Hinata giggled. Naruto just faked a pout that sent everyone into laughter. Across from them, Gara stared at Naruto with interest. Both of his siblings and sensei were sharing nervous looks, afraid that he may lose control. Several minutes later, all right everyone, we're going to start the matches again, so pay attention, Kushina said as she turned everyone's attention to the electronic board. The screen then began to roll through the available names before stopping on the next pair. Karui of Kyumo vs Niji Hyuga, it seems fate has given me a chance to get revenge for my father, Niji grinned sadistically. Guy frowned at his student, especially when he heard the next part that was quietly whispered. A shame though that I can't get revenge on the main family though. Guy had a pretty good idea of how Niji would try to get revenge on the main family. Hey, girly boy. Get down here so I can kick your ass already. Karui yelled. That attitude is like an Uzumaki's, Kushina thought if she wasn't dark-skinned, would think that she was one. It has been known that an Uzumaki is either pale-skinned or light-tanned. There has never been any Uzumaki that was dark-skinned. Just surrender, fate has already decreed me the winner, Niji said as he slid into the Jukan stance. Karui just scoffed and gripped her sword that was on her back. Are both fighters ready? Kushina asked. Both nodded and the female Uzumaki started the match. Niji and Karui raced toward each other and attacked. Niji with a simple chakra laced palm strike, and Karui with a slash of her sword. Both managed to dodge each other's strike and whirled around for another one. This time, Niji slid under her sword and managed to jab. Her in the leg. Karui jumped back and attempted to get the numbing sensation out of her leg. Niji capitalized on this and darted forward with another palm strike. Karui managed to knock his strike away and punched him in the chest. This did little to stop him, however, as he had felt worse with Guy. But it served its purpose of stalling him for a moment so Karui could leap over him and kick him in the back. Is that the best you can do? Niji taunted. I've felt harder kicks from the dead last on my team. Idiot Hyuga, don't underestimate the power of Kyumo, Karui scoffed. Oh yes, Niji began, let us not underestimate the power of Kyumo. Their power to try and kidnap little children to boost their power. Karui saw red and charged at Niji with a loud battle cry. Niji smirked and slid into another stance. I don't need to show my trump card here, I'll save that for later. 8 trigrams, 32 palms. Niji then raced forward and began a series of jabs into Karui's tenketsu. 2 palms. 4 palms. 
8 palms, 16 palms, 32 palms. Karui crumpled into a heap at Niji's feet. The older Hyuga smirked and walked away as Karui's sensei jumped down and helped his student onto the stretcher of the medical team. Kushina announced Niji as the winner but glared at him behind her mask. I didn't think that he would be this brutal towards a Kyumo ninja, Naruto muttered. Hinata just looked down at her feet, feeling sad for her cousin. Naruto noticed this and squeezed her shoulder in a comforting manner. Don't worry about it, one day, one of us will knock some sense into him, he grinned. You're right, thank you Naruto-kun, Hinata smiled. Next fighters, Kushina announced. Zaku Abumi vs Ryu of Taki The two fighters entered the arena, Zaku with his right arm in a sling, and Ryu with two containers filled with water on his waist. Are both fighters ready? Kushina asked. Let's get this over with, Ryu sneered. Bring it on punk! Zaku yelled. The next thing they knew, they were rubbing their heads as they sported matching bumps. I asked you a question. Kushina roared as she expelled a large amount of K.I. Ino and Choji hugged each other out of fear. Kiba hugged Akamaru for dear life, Kankuro was on the floor foaming at the mouth while Tamari was trying to breathe, Baki was holding onto the railing, and Gara was shivering out of fear. It didn't help that Shikaku was screaming in fear himself. Guy was down on his knees as he tried to stop shaking, Lee in a similar state, Ten Ten was on her back as she tried to breathe, and Niji was holding onto the railing like it was a lifeline. Shikamaru was knocked out, and Asuma was up against the wall while trying to keep it together. Enko was just barely keeping herself from going down there and making Kushina her new best friend. In the seal, the Kyubi was shivering while using his tails to cover his rear, remembering the time he had called Kushina fat when she was pregnant with Naruto. It was an experience he wouldn't even wish on Madara. Jiyu had fainted on top of his head. Dosu and Kin were knocked out by the pure rage and Orochimaru was down on his knees. Where have I felt this before? He roared in his head as he tried to get control of himself. Yujito was down in the fetal position while Omoi was passed out, and Killer B was shaking, especially since this K.I. was worse than his brother's. Fu was shaking like a leaf and holding onto the railing for dear life. The only ones not affected were Hiruzen, Tsunade, Shizun, Team 8, and Kakashi. Because they were used to Kushina's anger. Though it didn't help the pain go away. Hyuga compound, be a man. Hitomi yelled as she pounded on her bedroom door. I will not risk my health. Hayashi yelled back as he barricaded the door. Kushina's K.I. was felt throughout the village, and Hayashi was currently barricading himself, Hanabi, and Natsumi in his and his wife's room until the Uzumaki matriarch was calm. He only left Hitomi outside because she was safe from Kushina's anger every time it erupted. She's in the forest of death. Hitomi yelled. That means nothing. Hayashi protested. Why is your Tusan acting funny? Natsumi asked her friend. I think it's because he can tell that your Ka-san is angry, Hanabi answered. Natsumi bowed and continued watching Hayashi fortify the door. In the beginning, Natsumi was extremely shy and nervous around anybody who wasn't Kushina, though she wasn't as nervous around Naruto due to her feeling a connection to him. Eventually, she managed to get comfortable around the Hyuga and Senju families and was able to enjoy her time with them. Hanabi even became her best friend, albeit, her only friend that is her age. Chunin exams tower, Tsunade managed to calm down Kushina and get the masked woman to continue the match. Her temper's worse than I remember, the slug Sanin thought as she made her way back up the steps. So, are you two ready? Kushina asked. Yes, the two fighters said, afraid for their lives if she got mad again. Kushina started the fight and jumped back. I'm gonna blow you away. Zaku declared as he lifted his good arm and aimed it at Ryu. Zankaha. A blast of compressed air at Ryu. 
The Taki ninja jumped out of the way and threw a kunai at Zaku, but it was blown away by another blast of air. All right then, so it looks like you're using some fake futon jutsu, Ryu noted. W what? Does that mean that you can't use any real jutsu? He taunted. That's it. Zero percent sound, one hundred percent air. Zankaha. Zaku fired more blasts of air at Ryu. Some of them managed to clip the Taki Genin. Time to end this. Swaytun, water palms. Ryu opened the containers on his waist and used his chakra to control the water so that it would stick to his hands. Here he goes again, that one trick phony, Fu muttered as she watched the match through half closed eyes. Ryu dashed forward and clasped his hand. Around Zaku's good arm as he prepared another Zankaha while aiming his other hand to punch Zaku in the gut as the water formed some spikes on his fist. The Oto Shinobi then whipped his other arm out of the sling, revealing that it was healed the whole time, and aimed it at Ryu's head. The Taki Genin quickly moved his hand to grab Zaku's other hand and the two were in struggle. Let go! Zaku yelled as he tried to free his hands. You first! Ryu shot back. Up on the balcony, Dosu sighed. To think he's getting matched blow for blow by a shinobi from a minor village. Kin nodded in agreement while Orochimaru sighed, seeing that the upgrades he gave Zaku weren't helping him. Fine then, Zenkaha. Zaku yelled as he fired a blast of air at Ryu in hopes of blowing the Taki shinobi off of him. But things didn't go as planned. The blast of air made both shinobi shoot back and hit their heads against the wall, knocking them both out. Both are unable to continue, this match ends in a draw, and neither will advance, Kushina declared after taking a good look at the two. Great, guess that means I'll have to win for Taki, Fu muttered. Though it would be nice if I just fought for myself. Maybe you'll get lucky and have to fight that person from Kabuto's team, he doesn't look that strong, Naruto said. Naruto-kun. Be nice. Hinata chided as she slapped his arm. Naruto chuckled nervously and backed away. Oh look, the next two are up, Naruto said as he deflected the attention to the screen. Dosu Kinyuta vs Misumi Tsuruji, don't take too long, Kin said as Dosu made his way to the stairs. The mummified boy just chuckled and continued walking. The purple-clothed Kanoha Genin was already there and tapping his foot impatiently. Are both fighters ready? Kushina asked. Yes, Dosu told her, Misumi just nodded. Kushina started the match and jumped back as Misumi dashed forward and attempted to grab Dosu. The Oto Genin just barely managed to jump away before he landed and attempted to use his melody arm on Misumi. But the Kanoha Shinobi made another attempt to grab Dosu again, this time grabbing him and wrapping his body around the mummified boy like a snake. Surprised? Misumi asked. My special ability allows me to disconnect my joints and let me coil around you like a snake. This won't be able to hold me forever, Dosu stated, already working on his escape plan. I don't have to, just give up before I decide to snap your neck. Misumi stated as he tightened his hold on the Oto Shinobi to make his point. How about, no? Dosu asked. The next thing everyone saw was Misumi falling to the floor in agony as he tried to direct his arms to cover his ears, but his pain prevented him from properly molding his chakra. I don't get it, what happened? Ten Ten asked. It most likely has something to do with that shuriken next to him, Niji pointed out. Confused? Dosu chuckled. Don't worry, I'll explain it. You see, while you were rambling on about your little stretching ability, I managed to grab one of my hidden shuriken from my left sleeve and flick it into the air where it would land on my melody arm that you oh so graciously uncovered for me. The contact of metal on metal created sound waves that I directed into your inner ear. He then faced Kushina and said, He'll be out of it for a while though it looks like he's having a hard time pulling himself together as it is. Dosu is the winner, Kushina declared, seeing that Misumi wouldn't be able to get up. 
Several stretchers were brought out to carry him out since he was stretched out to the max, whoa, that's a scary ability, Naruto said. I guess those Odo guys take their village name seriously, Kakashi said. I know that there are a few jutsu out there that involve screaming, roaring, and the like, but I never expected there to be jutsu that use sound waves. Yeah, didn't you say that you encountered someone who could do some kind of shrieking attack? Kurinai asked. Kakashi nodded and turned to Guy. Hey Guy, remember that mission where we fought some IWA shinobi that were after a scroll we were delivering to Suna? The spandex wearing Jounin nodded and said, Yes, that was an unyouthful group with a very unyouthful jutsu. I couldn't hear properly for a week. Kakashi chuckled and said, I think Pakin had it worse. Hey, Fu said, check out who's next. Everyone looked up to see the next pair of fighters. Hinata Hyuga vs. Kenkuro Sabaku, alright Hinata-chan, you're up. Naruto shouted. If you win, then all of Team 8 will be in the finals, Shino said. And I'll be able to brag about this for a long time. Kurin I thought with glee. I'll do my best, the Hyuga heir said with determination. Kenkuro smirked as he saw his opponent walk down the stairs. Looks like I get a weakling. Tamari scoffed, it's an attitude like that, that makes you lose all the time. Kenkuro rolled his eyes and said, please, all of the strong Kanoha guys already fought, now we're left with the runts. Kenkuro, Gara said in a cold voice, if you keep talking like that, I'll kill you. Kenkuro paled and raced down to the arena and stood across from Hinata. Are both of you ready? Kushina asked. Yes, Hinata replied. Yeah, Kankuro told her. Then begin. Kushina said as she jumped away. Hinata instantly activated her Byakugan and entered the Jukan stance. Kankuro merely took the wrapped bundle off of his back and placed it next to him. He doesn't have any chakra. Hinata thought as she took a good look at Kankuro. She then noticed strings of chakra coming from his body and going into the bundle where it had a faint blue glow. A sign of chakra. She then used her Byakugan to look at the Kankuro standing before her. She was able to see right through the disguise and see a wooden puppet with four arms, shaggy hair, a tattered robe, and three eyes staring blankly back at her. So he's one of those puppet users I read about, Hinata thought. Judging from how the bundle has chakra coming out of it, I can guess that the real one is hiding inside. So if I dash towards the puppet first, I can take him by surprise. Hinata dashed forwards and Kankuro tensed as she came near. Right as he was about to throw a punch at her, Hinata turned on her heel and started to attack the bundle next to the fake Suna ninja. Gah, the real Kankuro cried out as Hinata started to target the available Tenketsu. The fake Kankuro fell to the ground as the real one jumped out of the wrappings to avoid any more damage. He already couldn't feel anything in his left arm as it took most of the hits. How did you know I was in there? Kankuro questioned as he glared at the heiress. My Byakugan saw that your puppet had no chakra system and that there were several strings of chakra attached to several joints on its body. I also saw that the strings were coming from the bundle that you had the puppet place next to it, Hinata explained. TCH, guess I get a good opponent, Kankuro muttered as he reached out with his right arm and sent out chakra strings to the puppet. Hinata noticed this and used her jukin to destroy the strings before she dashed towards Kankuro. Kankuro jumped back as Hinata started to attack. He would quickly move from side to side to avoid her attacks. Every time he tried to send some chakra strings to the puppet Hinata would destroy them. The older Suna Shinobi was starting to get frustrated with this and decided to go on the attack. He threw a punch at Hinata, but the dead weight of his useless left arm made him stumble a little, and Hinata capitalized on that. She slid past the weak blow and began to deliver several strikes to Kankuro's Tenketsu. The Sunanin didn't stand a chance as Hinata closed off the chakra points in his remaining arm and legs. 8 trigrams, 32 palms. 2 palms. 4 palms. 
8 palms, 16 palms, 32 palms. Proctor, he won't be able to move, Hinata said as Kankaro stood there. To prove her point, she gently poked him, and the small amount of force made him fall backward onto the floor. Hinata is the winner, Kushina declared. Hinata walked back up the steps where she was congratulated by her fellow ninja. She was then wrapped up in a hug by an ecstatic Naruto who was very happy that she won. Kurinai was giggling to herself about how every member of her team made it into the finals. Congratulations Hinata-chan. Naruto cheered. Hinata giggled and returned the hug with a light blush on her cheeks. Well, at least one Konoha Kunoichi made it, Kakashi said. Indeed, Hinata-san was very youthful. Guy bellowed. Hmm. Did you say something? Kakashi asked as he flipped a page in his book. Gah. You and your hip and cool attitude. Guy wailed. Everyone just sweat dropped as they watched the Jounin's antics. He's gotten weirder since I left, Orochimaru thought. Ino. Yamanaka vs. Kin Tsuchi, yes. Now I can go into the finals with Sasuke Kun and show him how strong I am. Ino declared with a fire in her eyes. Shikamaru just looked over and muttered, troublesome under his breath. Across the arena, Kin sighed. Why do I have to fight a fangirl? Did I do something wrong to deserve this? Dosu chuckled and said, look at it this way, you get an easy win. He chuckled, even more, when Kin gave him an annoyed look. And I wonder why you're the only one I can stand? Kin asked herself as she walked down to the arena. Ino was already there with a hand on her hip and impatiently tapping her foot. Geez, could you go any slower? Ino asked. Kin rolled her eyes and said, I could, but I decided to get down here quickly so I could end this pathetic fight. Are both fighters ready? Kushina asked. I'm ready to go. Ino roared. Let's go, Kin said. Begin. Kushina said as she jumped back a small distance. Kin started the fight by throwing a few sunbon needles at Ino. The blonde was stunned for a moment before she jumped back, however, one needle managed to hit her in the thigh. What's the matter? Can't handle a little needle? Kin taunted as she pulled out a new set and held them between her closed fingers. I'll show you. Ino yelled as she pulled out several shurikens and threw them at the Odo Kunoichi. Kin just jumped to the side before she placed her hands on her hips. Wow, what a throw! Kin smirked. That was slightly better than an academy student who was just starting. She then threw another batch of senbon at Ino, but the Yamanaka girl was able to avoid them as they stuck themselves into the wall behind her. She then turned her head back as she heard a small jingle of bells and saw that one of the senbon had a bell attached to it. You're going to use that old trick? Ino scoffed. What trick is she talking about? Kiba asked. It's an old trick with Senban, Kakashi answered. People who would use Senban would sometimes tie a bell onto a few of them and throw them with regular Senban. They would use this tactic so that they could trick their opponents into dodging only the Senban that have the bells on them. Because they would instinctively dodge the ones that make noise. Back at the arena floor, Kin smiled as she saw Ino reach into her pouch and pull out a kanai. Oh? Are you going to throw some kunai at me now? Ino responded by charging forward and stabbing her kunai at the Odo Kunoichi. Kin moved to the side and jabbed at Ino with a fistful of senban. She scrapped the Yamanaka on the arm and jumped back as Ino flipped her kunai into a reverse grip and jabbed her hand backward. Kin then threw her senban at Ino and managed to hit her in the shoulder. Ow! What the hell was that? Ino yelled as she pulled out the needled and rubbed her shoulder. What happened? Shino asked as he observed the fight. Naruto discreetly activated his Sharingan and narrowed his eyes. Looks like she's charging her chakra into the Senban, and it looks like she's using lightning. You're right, 
Kakashi said as he observed Kin with his Sharingan. She's using lightning chakra and pumping it into her Sanban. She's using them to deliver small bursts of electricity into Ino. Like a static shock. Hinata suggested. Correct, Kakashi nodded, but this hurts a bit more than that. Down below, Ino had dodged another set of Sanban, a bell mixed into the group, and was glaring at her opponent. So, this is your limit? Kin taunted. You're a disgrace to Kunoichi everywhere, just like your pink-haired friend. So far, only that blue-haired Hyuga and the one with her hair in buns have done Kanoha Kunoichi and justice. That's it. Ino yelled as she raised her kunai and cut off her ponytail, holding the blonde locks in her free hand. Kin raised an eyebrow as she threw the hair in the space between them, effectively covering the arena floor. Is this supposed to mean something? Kin asked as she raised her hands to throw more sunban. Chakra Hair Trap Technique Ino cried as she sent a pulse of chakra through the hair. Kin's eyes widened as she felt her whole body freeze up. What? Kin cried as she struggled to move, only being allowed to weakly twitch. Now for the main event, Ino said as she put her hands in a seal and used it like a scope to aim at Kin. What are you going to do? Kin asked as she struggled to move. Simple, Ino began, I'm going to take over your mind and make you forfeit the match. Wow. Ino's got this in the bag. Choji exclaimed. Asuma nodded behind him in agreement. Is that right? Kin asked with a devious smirk on her face. Well, how are you going to do that if you can't aim right? Huh? Was all Ino could get out before she heard a ringing noise from behind her. She looked back and saw the single bell on the sunban that was stuck in the wall behind her. She then felt a pain in her head and turned back to see that Kin had multiplied and that Ino herself was starting to lose control of her body. W, what did Yoyu do? Ino groaned as she struggled to get a hold of herself. Simple, all of the Kin said at once. What I noticed was that your little hair trap couldn't stop me completely, so I was able to twitch my hand, which had a wire connected to the bell behind you. With the sound waves that it's producing, I'm able to affect you with my genjutsu. Preventing you from aiming at me. Ugh, that ringing's causing me pain even from up here, Kiba complained. Akamaru and Naruto nodded in agreement while holding their oars. So go ahead and try to hit me with your little jutsu, if you can tell which one's the real me that is, Kin taunted. Shikamaru sighed, I don't think Ino's gonna win this one. I might have beat her if I found the wire and connected my shadow with it to control her. Looks like Hinata's going to be the only Kanoha Kunoichi going to the finals, Asuma sighed. Kurinai patted. His shoulder in a comforting manner. If I hit the wrong one, I'll be out of it until my mind finds its way back to my body and I'll still lose. Ino thought. I forfeit, Ino said as she held her head in pain. The ringing stopped and Ino weakly got up. Ino Yamanaka forfeits, Kintsuchi is the winner, Kushina said. Better luck next time, Kin said as she collected her needles and went back up the balcony. Ino hung her head as she trudged up the stairs and walked over to her team. They tried to comfort her for her defeat but were unable to. Just when it seemed that Ino would stay silent for the rest of the preliminaries, Hinata walked up to her and slapped her on the cheek. What was that for? Ino cried as she rubbed her red cheek. I'm sorry Ino-chan, Hinata started, but I needed to do that to snap you out of your little depression. You did well out there, it doesn't matter that you lost, as long as you did your best that's all that matters. Ino gave her a small smile and hugged the Hyuga heiress. Thanks, Hinata-chan, I needed that. Ino released the younger girl and walked back to her team with a small smile on her face. How fitting, a failure helping another failure, Niji sneered. Hinata turned to him and gave him an uncharacteristic glare that made him take a step back. I don't care if you insult me Niji and I Isan, but insult my friends and I won't hesitate to attack you, Hinata said in an eerily calm tone. 
Niji wisely shut up and turned back to his team. Hinata let out a breath and turned around to see the other rookie teams staring at her with wide eyes. What? She asked as she tilted her head to the side. Rock Lee vs. Gara Sabaku, YOSH. It is time to express my youth. Lee cheered. Lee, before you go down there, I have some good advice for you, Guy said as he knelt to his student's level. There's something very suspicious about that gourd on his back, Guy said. Everyone sweat dropped as they heard this. No, really? Was the collective thought of the entire room. I shall take your advice to heart Guy Sensei. Lee said as he jumped down to the arena where Gara was already waiting. As soon as he landed he put his arm in front of him as there was a popping noise. Lee opened his hand and dropped a cork. Everyone looked and saw that the cork from Gara's gourd was missing. I see that you are very eager to start this match, Lee said. Attack before I start this match again and I'll lop off one of your limbs, Kushina threatened as she pushed up the blade of her katana from its sheath with her thumb. Gara shivered before backing up a bit, Kushina sheathed her sword with a click and stood before the two genin. Are bot fighters ready? She asked. I am ready, Lee stated. Let's get this over with, Gara grunted. Begin. Kushina shouted as she jumped back. Lee raced towards Gara and began a series of kicks that were intercepted by a wall of sand that shot out of the gourd and fell around Gara, leaving him in a circle. Gara then started his counterattack and sent out a stream of sand to crush Lee. The spandex wearing Jenin leaped back and landed in a crouch before moving again to avoid the sand. Lee leaped behind Gara and threw several shurikens at the redhead, only for the sand to block them on its own. Gara didn't even twitch. Why doesn't he use any ninjutsu or genjutsu? Fu asked. Hinata activated her Byakugan and took a good look at Lee's chakra system. His chakra pathways are underdeveloped. He can use chakra to use walk on trees and water, but I don't think he can do anything other than taijutsu. Correct, Guy said, his eyes never leaving the match, Lee cannot use ninjutsu or genjutsu. So he has decided to become a wonderful shinobi just by using taijutsu. Down below, Lee was picking himself off of the floor after being knocked away by the sand. He looked back at Gara with a fire burning in his eyes, showing how determined he was to win this fight. You are a wonderful opponent Gara-san, Lee said as he got back up. Gara said nothing but looked back at him with an impassive stare. Lee frowned at Gara's lack of words but didn't let it deter him. He's not fast enough to get through the sand shield, Naruto said. If he were able to hit it hard enough, he could make the sand disperse long enough to hit him. Guy nodded at this and shouted to Lee, Lee. Take them off. Lee looked up at his sensei in surprise. But Guy sensei. You said to always keep them on. This time I'm making an exception, Guy told him as he flashed him a smile as his teeth pinged. Lee nodded and leaped into the air and landed on the stone hands. He reached down and removed his orange leg warmers to reveal weights on his legs. Weights? Eno asked. He's been wearing weights this whole time? Looks like he takes his training seriously. Wonder how much they weigh? Shino said. All right, now I'm ready. Lee said as he stood up and held both sets of weights in his hands before he let them drop. A few weights aren't going to make a difference, Tamari thought as she watched them fall. The weights hit the ground on either side of Kushina with a thundering crash and sent up a giant cloud of dust on both sides of the stone hands, making the elder Uzumaki shriek in surprise. Everyone's eyes widened and almost fell out of their heads. Guy, you are too much, Kakashi thought as he sighed. Lee vanished in a burst of speed and Gara's sand flew up to block the Kanoha Genin but the formation of the sand was destroyed as the force of the hit sent the grains flying and Lee's fist came within inches of Gara's face. Gara's eyes widened as he started to look around with shock in his eyes as the sand shield was being blown apart. Looks like this kid's going to break Shikaku's Suna no Tate, 
QB said as he watched the match through Naruto's eyes. Gara's defense was being blown apart by Lee's fast and strong attacks. He kept looking around as. He tried to understand how his absolute defense was failing him. The next thing he knew, there was a force on his head that forced him to bend at the waist. Gara's been hit. Tamari cried. Baki was gapping at the sight while the Kanoha shinobi cheered. Lee rushed at Gara as the Suna Genin sent a wave of sand to destroy Lee, but he vanished at the last second and began to attack Gara's defense. Soon he kicked Gara in the cheek and sent the Suna Genin to the floor. I can just barely keep track of him. Naruto exclaimed as he watched the match with wide eyes. However, he was able to keep track of Lee with his Manjiku as it was hidden under a Genjutsu. Gara got back up slowly, obviously never having been used to getting hit before if his grunts were any indication. Everyone saw that there was sand falling from his face as he held a crazed expression. There's another shield? Ten Ten cried. He's, getting unstable, Tamari whispered as she gripped the handrail tightly. She and Kankuro shared a look of worry as they watched the sand begin to collect on his body. Looks like that armor takes quite a bit of chakra, Kakashi said as he looked at the fighters with his Sharingan. Lee then began to unravel his bandages after seeing Guy give him a nod. Lee then vanished in a blur and began to circle Gara as a whirlwind surrounded him. Lee then sped up and kicked Gara in the chin, sending the redhead up into the air. Lee gave him more kicks, sending Gara higher into the air as the sand reached up towards the two. Lee then cringed while Guy closed his eyes in prayer before Lee wrapped his bandages around Gara before he drove him into the ground head first. Omot Renj. Lee cried as the two hit the ground, creating a massive explosion of smoke and debris. Lee landed just outside the impact zone, breathing heavily, as everyone saw the motionless Gara in the crater. He did it. Choji cried. Wrong, Naruto said as he narrowed his eyes. Kushina stepped forward to Gara and looked down at him. Just then, Gara turned to sand and fell apart. When did he do the Kawarimi? Guy cried. Kakashi turned to him and said, When you closed your eyes to pray, Lee cringed out of pain. That's when the switch happened. Gara then appeared out of a sand cloud behind Lee with a crazed chuckle. Tamari and Kankuro hugged each other out of fear when they heard him. Gara made a single hand seal and the sand burst into action, attacking Lee as he tried to defend himself. Lee was battered around and eventually thrown into the wall as a large wave of sand smashed him. Lee has constantly bashed around as Gara threw him around. Eventually, Lee regained his mobility and was able to dodge all of Gara's attacks while having a smile on his face. How is he able to keep going? Hinata asked. Because, the Kanoha lotus blooms twice, Guy told her proudly. Guy. Did you teach a genin such a dangerous technique? Kakashi yelled. Guy's gaze never left the arena as he spoke to Kakashi. You heard me say it before Kakashi, Taijutsu is the only way for Lee to become a shinobi. He showed a great talent for it and is skilled with it. How many of the Hashiman can he open? Kakashi asked. Five, Guy told him. Kakashi-sensei, what is he talking about? Kiba asked. Kakashi turned to his student and explained, what Guy is talking about is the Hashiman, or the eight inner gates, a series of tenketsu on the body that greatly increase chakra flow in the body. They are the Kaimon, Kyumon, Simon, Shomon, Taman, Kaimon, Kayaman, and Shimon. Each gate grants you a burst of power, and by opening all of the Hashiman you can gain power far greater than any of the five Kage. I'm sensing a, but, in there, Shino interjected. Correct, the more gates you open, the more your body is strained. Prolonged use of the Hashiman can lead to the tearing of your muscles. And once you open the final gate, you die. You shouldn't have done that guy, are you trying to kill your student? Kakashi shouted. You know nothing about Lee. Guy shouted back. 
He is determined to become a wonderful shinobi using only taijutsu, and I am going to help him reach it. The condition has been met, Li thought as he crossed his arms. A burst of chakra exploded from him, drawing shocked looks from most of the occupants of the room. Gara remained as impassive as ever. The air around Li shook as his body began to turn red and veins popped out of his skin. To defend my ninja way. Li was exerting so much chakra, that the ground around him began to crack. Kushina took a big step back as she was watching the whole event. Li vanished in a large burst of speed and crashed into Gara as he began to attack him. Li's attacks created so much dust that it was blown all around the arena, effectively blinding all of the combatants. Except for Shino because of his shades. When the dust cleared, everyone looked and saw that the arena was empty. Where did they go? Naruto cried as everyone began to look around. Above. Fu cried as she spotted Gara shooting out of the dust cloud. The sand on his skin began to crack and fall away as Gara tried desperately to hold it together. Li appeared above Gara and began to kick him around in the air with devastating blows. His muscles are tearing themselves apart. Kakashi exclaimed as he saw Li begin to struggle with his movements. That's gonna be a tough one to heal, Tsunade said as she watched the match with wide eyes. She had seen Guy open the Hashiman before, but he was a Jounin by then. Seeing Li, a Jenin, open them was just shocking. Take a look at what I have in store for you Niji. Li cried in his thoughts as he approached Gara for a final blow. Li vanished in another burst of speed and sent Gara to the ground with a punch to the gut. But Li grabbed Gara's strap and pulled him back to deliver a shattering punch to Gara. You're a wrench. Li cried as he and Gara crashed towards the ground. I couldn't see a thing. Even with the Manjiku. Naruto shouted in surprise. Such incredible power. You wouldn't expect such skill from a genin. Kyubi exclaimed. Li then pulled back as the pain in his arm became unbearable. Gara's gourd then turned into sand and cushioned the impact. Gara. Tamari and Kankuro cried as they watched with wide eyes. The dust settled and everyone saw Gara laying on a cushion of sand. Li was laying on his back a few feet away. Gara raised his hand and directed the sand towards Li. The sand moved towards Li as he tried to move away, but the pain was too much and he was a sitting duck. The sand enveloped his left arm and leg. Sabaku Q, Gara whispered as he closed his hand. The sand crushed Li's arm and leg and sent Li skidding across the ground until he lay there motionless. Now you die, Gara said as he sent a wave of sand at Li. But the wave exploded outwards and revealed Guy as he stood there defending his student. Why save him? Gara asked as he clutched his head in pain. Because he's my precious student, Guy answered. Gara said nothing as he walked away, the gourd reforming as he walked. The winner is Dash, Kushina began to say before she looked over. Everyone followed her gaze and saw that Lee was standing there, his limbs shaking, and blood dripping from his left arm and leg. Guy walked over to him and began to tell him that the match was over until he saw that Lee was unconscious. He's out cold, Kakashi said as he slid his headband back over his Sharingan. He's standing up due to willpower alone. The winner, due to knockout, is Gara, Kushina said. Tsunade-sama. Hurry. He needs immediate attention. Tsunade jumped down to the arena and began to help Lee. His breathing is steady, no internal organs were damaged. He's got a lot of muscle tears and fragmented bones, but I'll be able to fix them. He'll need some rehabilitation to use them properly. His left arm and leg are heavily damaged. I'll be able to heal him since the damage was only recent and his body hasn't tried to heal itself yet, but it'll be a long time before he could be able to use them properly. Shizun. Tsunade yelled. Her apprentice appeared before her instantly. Head to the hospital and prepare a room for surgery. This boy needs medical attention ASAP. 
Hi Tsunade-sama. Shizen said as she raced to the hospital. You! Tsunade shouted as she pointed to Guy. Grab the other end of this stretcher, we're going to get your student to the hospital now. Double time. Hi Tsunade-sama. Guy shouted as they lifted the stretcher with Lee on it and raced out the door. Why did she say it was due to a knockout? Naruto asked. Technically, Lee was unconscious after his left side was crushed, so Guy only interfered after the match was unofficially over, Karinai said. Plus, Asuma added, I think she knows that Lee would rather have lost due to a knockout rather than having lost due to Guy's interference. Poor Guy, I hope he gets better, Shikamaru said. All right then will the last two fighters come down? Kushina asked. Choji Akimichi vs Fu of Taki, of course, they save the best for last, Fu said as she leapt down into the arena. All right Choji, if you win this, I'll take you out for an all-you-can-eat buffet, Asuma said. Bring on the barbecue. Choji roared as flames appeared in his eyes. He raced down the steps and stood across from Fu as she rotated her shoulder. Are both fighters ready? Kushina asked. I'm ready. Choji said. So am I, Fu said as she moved a lock of green hair out of the way. Then begin. Kushina jumped away for the last time as the final match went underway. Baika no Jutsu. Choji pumped chakra through his body. His body expanded, making his girth grow quite a bit. How is making yourself fatter going to help? Fu asked herself. Unknown to her, these were the thoughts of all the other teams, except for Team 10. Now to win that barbecue. Choji exclaimed as his limbs and head retracted into his body. Chakra then came out of the retracted areas and propelled him forward until he was spinning like a giant boulder. Nikudan Sen Sha. Fu's eyes widened as the green human boulder came barreling toward her. She leaped out of the way, and Choji just turned to follow her. Fu took out a few kunai and threw them at the Kanoha Genin, they just bounced off of him as he was moving too fast. Guess this calls for some improvisation, Fu said as she made a few hand seals and took in a deep breath. Haydn, Rinpungakura no Jutsu. Fu exhaled a large amount of dust that filled the majority of the arena. Kushina jumped up and landed on the stone hands as she waved the dust out of her masked face. Interesting, it looks like a version of the Kirigakura no Jutsu, Kakashi noted. Except that this version seems to reflect light, Naruto pointed out. Indeed, the dust was shining brightly as the light from the ceiling reflected on it. The reflective properties of the powder were effectively blinding, and messed up Choji's sense of direction, making him crash into a wall. Choji had to turn himself back to normal to pull himself out. What the heck is this? Choji asked himself. A special jutsu that only I can use, Fu's voice answered. She's right, Kyubi answered. She's using the Nanobi scale powder as a hiding jutsu. That bug would use his scale powder to hide during a battle. Down in the arena, Choji was trying to look through the powder and find his opponent. The next thing he knew, he was hit in the back as Fu vanished into the dust again. The same thing happened multiple times and Choji was then knocked out of the cloud. Seeing that there was no more use for it since he was out, Fu dispelled the dust cloud. Choji weakly got up and saw that Fu stood above him with a kunai in her hands. Seeing no way out of it, Choji sighed and said, I surrender. The winner is Fu, Kushina said. Now will all the winners of the matches please come down? While everyone walked down to the arena floor, Fu pulled Choji to his feet. Hey, nice match. I didn't think that I would have to use my Rinpugaker no Jutsu, she said. This cheered Choji up a bit and he walked back to his team with a small smile on his face. Congratulations to all of you for your victories here today, Hiruzen said as he stood before the group. Now you will all have a month to train and develop new abilities before the finals. Why so long? Dosu asked. Because we need to give our important guests time to get here, 
and we will be sending invitations to your village leaders to come and see you all fight. Now please come up one at a time and take a number from this box. 6. Shikamaru told Enko as she was writing down the numbers. 3. Shino. 12. Kin. 1. Hinata. 5. Tamari. 4. Dosu. 9. Naruto. He looked around and saw the snickering faces of the ones who realized the irony. The Kyubi was roaring in laughter at it. 8. Yujito. Killer B snickered seeing that she had his number. 7. Fu. She wondered if there was a higher power playing a joke on her. I am, 11. Gara. 2. Niji. 10. Kakashi said as he drew for Sasuke, who was still recovering from the ceiling. All right, Anko said as she sent the results to the board controllers. Everyone take a look at the screen for the results. Match 1, Hinata Hyuga vs Niji Hyuga Match 2, Shino Aburame vs Dosu Kinyuta Match 3, Tamari Sabaku vs Shikamaru Nara Match 4, Fu of Taki vs Yujito Ni Match 5, Naruto Uzumaki vs Sasuke Uchiha Match 6, Gara Sabaku vs Kin Tsuchi Niji and I Isan, Hinata thought sadly as she saw the pleased grin that Niji wore. He was grinning at the prospect of getting revenge on the main branch. This may be challenging, Shino and Dosu thought, each of them thinking of ways to counter the abilities of the other. Troublesome, I have to fight another girl, Shikamaru muttered. Unfortunately for him, Tamari heard what he said and sent him a dark glare. Fu and Yujito looked at each other and grinned, excited at the prospect of testing their abilities against each other. Naruto grinned as he pictured himself giving Sasuke a good thrashing. Kakashi gulped as he shook a little in fear. Not fear for his student, but fear for Naruto when the whole village sees whatever he would do to Sasuke. Kim gulped rather loudly as she stole a glance at Gara, who thankfully didn't turn her way. She'd have to come up with something clever if she wanted to live. Later Hokage's office, thank you again Kushina for proctoring the preliminaries, Hiruzen said. With Hyate's sickness getting treated by Tsunade, I didn't want to stress him and make all that work go to waste. It was nothing, Kushina said as she waved the sand aim off. I think that was a good call due to all the dust that was flying around from. All that fighting. I must be a psychic if I could have a feeling like that, the Hokage chuckled. As Kushina prepared to leave, Naruto walked in and gave the two a look. One said that some things needed to be talked about. Hi Sochi, I was just about to head back to the compound to congratulate you on making it to the finals, Kushina said cheerfully. Can we put that on hold for right now Ka-chan? Naruto asked. Why? Kushina wondered. There are a few things that need to be talked about, Naruto said as he sat down in the other chair. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Guys, make sure to help the author by visiting the link in the description. This is Fox Sage, and I'm signing off.